Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you my motif farming route through Alinor. This is a little bit more advanced route than the past few that I've shown you, a little bit more chance of actually getting caught, but there are a ton of nobles, a ton of nobles on this route. So I have recorded the entire route for you here, but you really don't need to watch it if you don't want to. Um, I'll show you here in a second uh, where exactly I go on the map, and uh, you can just, you know, Take a look at it if you want, but certainly don't need to watch the whole video to get the route down. So here I'm just showing you exactly where I'm going. Of course we're in Somerset. This is Alinor, the major city. And then here I went ahead and starred all the locations that we're going to enter. There are a few more that you can enter along the way, but I think you'll find with this route you'll be able to fill up your bags pretty easily and you can even do it twice if you would like. There Again, there are other buildings along the way, but they don't have as many nobles, as many merchants, priests, mages, so there are more commoners, even a lot of servants, which generally don't have anything. And as we'll talk about throughout the video, uh, some of the servants seem to be put there just to make it more difficult to steal and kind of one more person to have to, to deal with. So uh, choose your own route. These are the locations, the buildings. I try to put the stars near the actual entrance to the building. And then here you can see where I leave from the Way Shrine to go ahead and head to the first building, which is, uh, I think, a temple or a church of some sort. Then down the street, hit up a couple of houses, etc. You could do this backwards. Um, instead of heading straight from the Way Shrine where I'm pointed there, you can take a left and go that direction. Um, there are several options. Whatever works best for you, you know, go for it. Try it out. See what works. And if you guys have any questions about any of this, feel free to hit it up in the comments below and I will definitely get back with you. If you have another route that you would uh, be okay with sharing as well, feel free to let me know uh, down in the comments. Um, and if you like this or don't like it, also let me know. I, I'm not expecting a ton of people to watch this, uh, but the few that do, if there's something you want to see or information you would like or whatever, I'm, I'm happy to make a video if, if that'll help you. So just let me know. So here I'm just going to show you my setup real quick. Of course I'm a Nightblade, I've got a Shadowy Disguise, Race Against Time, and then on the right there, Concealed Weapon, and then Ring of the Wild Hunt. I think this Nightblade is probably too fast. One thing you can do is bar swap and not have Concealed Weapon on your other bar to be able to slow down and then speed up whenever you want. With the Concealed Weapon though, it can be hard to get into position sometimes. So here our first target is this Priest. She'll often be standing right in the back, but she will walk up to the front, so I'm trying to get her quickly before she gets up to the front where it's harder to uh, take care of her. So if everything goes well and you pick once, you've got about a six second delay before you can pick again. If they reveal you somehow or you, they can see you or whatever, I found on average it's about like 16 seconds before you can uh, get in a position and have an opportune moment where you've got the uh, increased chance of pickpocketing successfully. Um, and then here you see that the noble catches me there. If you're wearing something or have some passives, racial, uh, so if you're Khajiit or if you're wearing one of multiple sets that will reduce your, your radius of detection, or if you have uh, one of the new passives, he won't be able to see you um, when you're pickpocketing the other person and vice versa. However, when you do go to Blade of Woe, you will be seen by one of these people. So if you're worried about the bounty, which I'm not on this guy, uh, then you'll not want to do that. So I'm making sure to get all these little uh, jewelry boxes. They could have something good in them. Really the only thing we don't want to loot is barrels and crates and stuff like that, which tend to more often than not have like housing, or um, I'm sorry, not housing items, but have like uh, crafting materials and stuff like that. And we're just, you know, it's not going to sell well. We're just not concerned with it. Another finer point. Um, this lady on the left side tends to stay there and she will see you when you're on the right with this guy. And so we make sure to take her out first because she's always kind of staring in his general direction. I found that if you take her out, then you can come to him and neither one of them will see you. And there's no reason to get a bounty if you don't have to. If getting a bounty is something that you are concerned about and want to minimize, uh, I'm going to make a video about that to kind of give you the overview of how to avoid that kind of thing, gear setups you can do, other techniques, etc. Oftentimes, I just honestly just don't even worry about it. I just can't be bothered for whatever reason. I don't really have a problem with having a bounty, especially as a Nightblade. Whenever I am just kicking around town, um, I have the same bar setup I have on now. This is like kind of my crafting slash running, gathering, whatever uh, build. So it's, it's all there in one. So there you see that that was a chef. 
Um, there are chefs and servants throughout these Eleanor townhomes, and they tend to only have one item on them. And I think they're just put there to cause problems and uh, slow us down. So honestly, you can do what you want, but I tend to just go up and either pick them once and then blade of woe or just honestly, I really should just go up and blade of woe Just get rid of them. The chance of them having anything good are pretty small. And that's actually another technique you can use to speed up your runs. Or if you happen to have a kind of a lower ledger domain and so you can't sell as many items and your bags get full or you get maxed out on items you can launder or sell. I guess not launder, but sell. So you can you can just pick once and then Blade of Woe. Uh, you'll end up saving yourself a, you know, uh, it ends up being like a fair amount of time. And in fact, why don't we put up a kill counter here and we'll see how many we're at. Uh, by the end of this and we can kind of do some math and figure out how many minutes that'll save us all right so we're at 10 for our kill counter now uh, this is kind of fun actually should have thought of this sooner uh, and we'll see how we do so again it's six it's six seconds for someone to reset after you picked them once if they don't catch you or turn around or something else if they catch you or they move or they reveal you and you have to get hidden again etc then you're looking at about 15 16 seconds uh, maybe even a little bit more if they're in kind of an awkward place or they cause you a lot of problems. So uh, I think I only picked her once. She's a noble. I should have picked her twice. The other guy, though, is a servant. And uh, honestly, you can pick once and then take him out. Uh, he's not going to have anything good. It's not really going to be worth it. And you can see that I've sped this one up because, you know, it's kind of a long video already. So on my Magic of Nightblade, I can just run off there and actually make it up top. Uh, I can't do that on my Stand Blade. Uh, so I just come around. It's not really a big deal. There's sometimes a guard there though. So keep that in mind since you've already got some stuff and then you're going to jump off and your health might be low. Don't run into the guard, uh, after taking like fall damage for like 70% of your health. That would, uh, that would, that would be unfortunate. So coming up here, we've got another servant or yeah, it's a servant here. So we're going to, I'm actually going to pick this person twice. I don't recommend doing this. Uh, I'm just a little OCD. I just want to get everything I can from him. But it's usually not worth it. I got a blue item there. I've got all the CP passives that are currently available right now, so I tend to get a little bit better swag. But again, just time for your time for your money, time for your gold. Uh, the chef over here, same deal. Definitely recommend Blade of Woeing him. I pick him twice just to kind of for the video to to show you guys. But um, a lot of times, even nobles, sometimes I will go through just to save time and just pick once and then stab. And uh, I think our kill counter. We're up in the teens now. That's pretty nice. So again, if you think, uh, you know, we're, we're at least, we're not even halfway through. So we're going to end up with 50 plus kills probably by the end of this. And you think six seconds a piece, do some math. That's uh, five minutes right there. And that's just not for not doing the second pick for just picking once and then play to pulling. The other thing is if you have a low ledger domain, and you don't have all the passives to increase your chance of pickpocketing. Or if you're not a Khajiit, they get a, like an extra 5%, which is kind of nice. Uh, if you're going to be stealing a lot, then, you know, you save plus the chance of you getting caught. Uh, if they move, it's going to take an extra 10 seconds. And you're going to end up with like 7 minutes. So I think uh, I think around 15 minutes. Honestly, you could probably get it, get it closer to 10 if you really tried. Um, but 15 minutes is probably a reasonable amount of time. So here we're going to leave that building. We're going to take a hard right. We're going to have to kind of go through town here. I'm <laughs> overcasting a lot of these abilities just because I'm a Magblade, so it doesn't really matter. And then uh, we've got a great uh, spot here. So we've got a Scholar outside, and then we've got a Mage outside. They're both very easy to pick and uh, very easy to Blade of Woe. And then there's a couple of Nobles that we're going to get to in a second as well. So this guy kind of walks back and forth. Sometimes he's over here on this little platform. It's really pretty here, so I took a moment to take a moment to uh, admire the view and show you guys since you're watching this video. So we're going to go in the Mage's Guild here. This is right beside the Eleanor townhome. And I go to pick this uh, lock and then I realize that, you know, I should show you guys that you can, if you kind of work yourself in a corner here, you don't have to be seen. And again, I could be wearing much better gear, having some passives slotted that would reduce my detection radius. If you're on a Khajiit, that will also help. Generally, there are several things that will that will reduce your uh, radius by at least two meters. If you have two of those things on, you can pretty much walk right up to a guard and they won't detect you and you won't have many issues with people inside of a home being able to see you. Any more than two is kind of overkill. 
Um, you can see in my video on Anvil, I kind of I walk right up to a guard and I have to practically like step on his toes before he notices me. So different loot tables uh, will give you different items. Mages guild uh, or mages rather tend to have uh, what you would expect. So you'll find soul stones that are actually housing items. You can find quite a few of those that way. They'll also tend to have more blue or purple items. And so that's why we want to do the mages. I have so many soul stones because there used to be a great spot in Vardenfell that they've, they've since patched away where you could just murder mages all day long. So uh, they don't sell for very much, unfortunately. So you're really just looking for the Eleanor motifs. And if that's the case for you, you could consider skipping this. And then there you see I did get a, yeah, this pattern high off carpet. You know, nothing amazing there. Uh, but uh, generally on these runs, I think I mentioned this, but uh, generally on these runs, I find at least one uh, motif that's worth at least 20, 20K. Uh, sometimes it'll be more, sometimes it'll be considerably more, and sometimes it'll be less, you won't find anything. So your mileage may vary. Another really important fact is that the higher your ledger domain is, the better your drops will be. So it's it's kind of unfortunate. I mean, it's cool because obviously if you have a higher ledger domain, it's really nice, and then you, you, can, you steal a lot and you get better stuff. That's cool. But new people starting out will start stealing and they get mostly whites. And I think that can be like, well, this isn't a great way to make money, especially if you've been playing the game for a while. You just haven't been doing the, uh, I think they call it justice, but the uh, the kind of like the night blade stealing kind of route. You haven't been doing that stuff. You know, you steal a bunch of white items and you're like, well, this is not worth it at all. But in reality, it's actually can be quite lucrative. I mean, just looking at what I sell here, like I said, I usually... Uh, 140 items, I usually sell that for over, especially with the new passives now, over 20k, and that's just in stolen goods. And, you know, one of the things, too, about this is, like, there, there, I'm sure there are better ways and faster ways to make money, but if you like playing a Nightblade or you like this kind of thing, it's kind of fun. Um, it really is, and you can kind of just do it for a little bit, quit, whatever, um, while you're waiting on people. It does fill up your bag, so you have to be careful before you go into a dungeon, but I don't know, just kind of a fun thing. Uh, this guy here, and I think his friend over there by the harp, I have found skooma bubblers on multiple occasions. And again, I don't remember which one of these two guys it is, whether it's the servant or I think the guy over by the harp is like a noble or a merchant. And then I just go over here and <laughs> try out my luck with a guard. So this is an interesting character here. Um, this one is a noble, but they're so easy to pickpocket, it makes me think, actually I think both of them, it makes me think that maybe they're like a servant uh, or something, like something's glitched out. But I think that uh, the younger lady over there that's sweeping is, she's considered a noble, but it's very easy to pickpocket her. And I, I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's a glitch or uh, if it's working as intended. Um, there, I try my luck with a guard again, kind of piss him off. So straight ahead there, there's another building. Um, I don't usually go in this one because most of the people in there are servants. There's a lot of servants, and I just have found after doing this enough times that uh, I don't get enough loot. But this this house here I, I do like. And I would encourage you, you know, while you're running around, try some of these places out. You might find something that I missed or something better. Coming in here, you can see that I'm not the only Nightblade that's been hit through recently. We've got a victim on the floor. Uh, I don't notice this person here. Having, having been standing there and, and they catch me. And you can see that, again, this person is kind of, yeah, they only have one thing in their bags. They're kind of more there to cause problems, really both these people. So I recommend uh, just blade of blowing them. There, I'm just annoyed, so I just uh, take them out. Uh, another thing you can do, you can see that Calurian's there procced. Um, you can put on a proc set and when someone for when you're stealing, like a proc set and then maybe one for a stealth detection or something, if you would like. And the reason for that and why that can be nice is that, like, when someone spots you or you just want to get rid of them, you know, you want to hit them once or twice, swallow soul, whatever, you get the Calurians proc, they're dead. It's just kind of quick. You get the proc and then you're over it. Um, it it's just a little bit faster with a proc set than having to hit them twice, uh, you know, in a couple of seconds just because you get that burst damage. So here's a civil servant. Um, I haven't noticed anything unique on them or uh, different about their loot table. I mean, it's it's better than average. Uh, the way you can determine if someone has a better than average loot table is just by how hard it is to pickpocket them. 
if you notice that uh, their chance to pickpocket is similar to that of a, a merchant or a noble, then you can pretty well guarantee that, okay, it's going to be better. And then here you see I have some inventory problems. I kind of cut some of that out. But basically I started with uh, 124 empty spots in my bag. So I have 208 spot, uh, bag space on this guy. And then I had 84 to start off with. So again, um, 124-ish. Uh, and then they got filled up before I even, I even finished the run. And so I probably have over 140 items here. It's probably safe to say. And honestly, on my night blades, I prefer to get bag space on my horses first um, for just such a reason. Because you can run around as a night blade at the speed gap, stealth, overworld. And so you get a 200% bonus as compared to mounted, where I think it goes up to like 250. And, you know, that extra 50% is, is really nice to have. But if you're on a night blade and you might have a character that you're stealing a lot, uh, I would recommend leveling up first your uh, bag space on your mount. I don't think it'll be something that you regret. But if you happen to know, if anybody uh, watching this happens to know of an add-on that will delete some of these like white items, like the 40 gold piece items that you pick up and can do so consistently without fear of it deleting something super valuable, I would love to know. Please let me know in the comments below. And uh, with that, I'll leave you here with once more a map of our route that we took. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.